Welcome to Insanely Positive. Your oasis of joy when the world seems gray and full of grumpy faces. I'm Suzanne Freiherz. Thank you for joining me. I'll feed you buckets of joy to bring out your best self so you can live your best life. Hello, everyone. Let's have a look at the magic and the power and the joy that enthusiasm brings into our life. Last time, we talked about relationships and private stuff. If you've missed that, please make sure to listen in. I called it Enthusiasm, how to spice up your relationships. And it's all about how to kick open the doors to enthusiasm and leave no space for gray routine. And this time, I would like to share my experience and my view on how enthusiasm is a big, big contributing factor to success. And I know the power of enthusiasm from both perspectives, as a job seeker and as an employer. Also, I would like to share with you how you can take people with you when you're enthusiastic about your work or one specific idea. So, how to take people with you. And let me begin by just pointing out all these fantastic qualities that are contained in enthusiasm. Enthusiasm is like a powerful package to create success. So what, what comes with enthusiasm? That's excitement. That's inspiration motivation, and even creativity and persistence. Now allow me to share how enthusiasm helped me to get jobs. When I was at university and I needed to earn money to pay for, pay from sc for school. I often had promotion jobs. And that was fantastic because they paid more money than anywhere else. So I was always eager to get these jobs. And when I was invited for an interview, I always got the job. Why? Very simple. Because I was super enthusiastic. I just made sure that they all knew that I want this job. And it would mean the world to me to get it. And it did. It did mean the world to me. To pay for school and everything. Books. All that. So once I got the job, I continued to be enthusiastic. What do I mean by that? I made sure to be active instead of waiting to be told what to do. To see the work and to do it so they didn't have to ask me for every little thing. I made sure that no one needed to ask me twice to get things done. And of course, I made mistakes. <laughs> In every job, every one of us makes mistakes. So I did make mistakes, of course, and I needed to time to learn all the new skills, but that was always okay and tolerated because when the co-workers and the boss they see that you're motivated and eager to learn then it's okay to make mistakes and to just have this learning curve so i always communicated and showed appreciation about having this job Because I think with being enthusiastic comes appreciation. The willingness to make an effort and to bring positive attitude and energy to the job. So in short, I think enthusiasm helps you to be like someone 
you would love to work with and also you would think of when it comes to promoting someone. Enthusiasm attracts attention. In your job and even beyond your job and the company you work for. So when I did a promotion job, I was always offered another job, either in the same company or even in another one. So once I was working on a health expo and someone approached me from a rival company and said, I've been watching your work and I want to offer you a job in our company because we want someone like you work for us, not for our competitor. Ah, I was blown away. I had no idea about the power of enthusiasm back then. And I know from all those years, looking back now, I understand that enthusiasm always helped me to get a job. Because when you're enthusiastic, you're just standing out from the crowd. And it opens doors you didn't even see yourself, like being offered another job in another company. So if now you're thinking, well, okay, being enthusiastic is easy when you love your job. Oh, I can tell you <laughs> the jobs I had back then were not my dream jobs. <laughs> Some were even very far from doing what I love doing. But my attitude is that whatever I decide to do, I always do my best. And I motivate myself to do it with enthusiasm. And that's simply because it's my life that we're talking about. So whatever I do, it's on me to add value. I just don't want to do things half-heartedly because this would add up and add up over the years and then be a big part of my life where I just lived half-heartedly. And I think it's a gift to be alive. And I, I want to live it with all my heart, the ups and the downs. And I just want to live my life fully and completely. So if you think about your job, even if it's not your dream occupation, doesn't it make a huge difference in your quality of life when you give your best and when you motivate yourself with being enthusiastic. When we practice to always be the most enthusiastic person in the room, we just make ourselves happier. We stay motivated. We feel more fulfilled with what we do and we attract attention. And who knows what opportunities will open up. So like I said before, I've worked in many non-dream jobs. Same as Tom. I was a waitress. I was a chambermaid. I did telephone surveys. I worked in all kinds of shops. I scrubbed floors. I worked in a tobacco shop where people were allowed to smoke and I am a complete non-smoker, always have been, always will be. <laughs> and I always hated smoke. So it was super challenging to find something to be enthusiastic about, to just standing in this cloud of smoke all day <laughs> and then to come home and still have this smell in my nose and my hair and my clothes and everywhere. <laughs> but... You know what? I was enthusiastic about the fact that the job enabled me to study and to buy the books I needed. And Tom has the same view on this, these things. Tom, he had worked super hard and really unpleasant jobs. He worked in a sewage plant. He was a channel digger. And that's a also a very dangerous job. He worked for the garbage collection, just to name a few. 
and he never thought himself too good for something. And everything was part of our journey. And every job was a step forward. And when I think about it now that Tom built a successful business from scratch later in life, just proves that making an effort always pays off. And Tom is a super enthusiastic person and I just love his enthusiasm. And I'm sure without his enthusiasm, we wouldn't be where we are now. And now we are able to do a job that we really love. And speaking of building a business, nowadays Tom and I are working as a husband and wife team, which is fantastic. But a couple of years ago, we had a studio that was open seven days a week. And you can't do this as a team of two. So when Tom and I had a job opening and invited candidates to come in for an interview, we always looked for someone with, who is enthusiastic about getting the job. And we had the choice between people with equal qualifications, but some were sitting there during the interview telling us that they want the job because it's so conveniently close to where they're living. <laughs> and others said they love our spirit, they appreciate the service we, we offer our customers, um, they would just love to be a part of our team, and it would just be a dream, to, a dream come true. And that's a really easy decision, isn't it? Who would you take? Wouldn't you give the job to someone who shows enthusiasm and passion and really appreciates getting the job? Who would you want to work with? You don't want to work with someone just because the location is conveniently close to their home, right? So enthusiasm is a door opener. As I said, I know from experience, from looking for a job and being an, an employer. So you cannot go wrong with being the most enthusiastic person among everyone else. You always stand out from the crowd. And now let's have a look at taking people with you. When you work with humans, it's vital to be able to take people with you. My job, for example, is to motivate humans to take better, better care of themselves, to, to get start moving and to take time to relax and develop a positive attitude towards themselves, towards doing some sort of sports and to self-care in general. As we all know, the fitness and the health industry is not full of positive images. When you think about it, we refer to a workout as being torture. Or we say, that was a hell of a workout. Or we say stuff like, no pain, no gain. So when you look at the words we use when we speak about workouts and fitness in general, it's all about competition. It's all about achievement. And it's building on the pressure to perform that we already have every day and that we would need to, to take a break from, right? We need a break from all this pressure in our daily lives. And did you ever notice that hardly anyone talks about this joy that we get from giving the body what it needs to stay healthy, meaning some movement? <laughs> and it's not about being super hard on yourself. A workout is not meant to be torture. Because the truth is, the healthiest workout is not being as hard as possible on yourself, because if that were the case, athletes would be the healthiest people, but they aren't. The body just needs a regular and moderate workout done with fun and with joy and just 
giving you the space to connect with yourself. And that's just the, the healthiest thing you can do for yourself. Regular, moderate, done with joy, where you just come home to yourself. But like I said, this image of fitness and the majority of fitness classes is so full of competition and judgment that many of us are not highly motivated to start a workout, which is super understandable. If someone told me, ah, I'm doing this workout, this is quite a torture every time. I, I wouldn't be like, oh, yay, count me in. <laughs> so I want to offer a different choice. <laughs> and every time I teach a class or a seminar, I am enthusiastic and I, I can feel how my enthusiasm takes my group with me. I am enthusiastic about every movement, every stretch, every breath. And I can see how this motivates everyone in the group to just with joy and fun work with themselves and to rediscover this, this natural joy of movement because the body enjoys to move. So my enthusiasm motivates more than anything else. I don't push my groups. I'm not hard on them. I don't encourage them to be hard on themselves because I think this is what we do all day long anyway. So we need a break from all that. So I encourage everyone to find a challenge that they can deal with calmly. And I encourage everyone to have a laugh when they fall. And I encourage everyone to be proud of themselves when they allow themselves to take a break. That's a brand new idea, isn't it? Because usually taking a break is associated with, oh, I can't do it. I'm not fit enough. I'm not strong enough. I have to take a break. But I think it's very brave. And it's a sign of strength when you allow yourself a break. It's something that we usually don't do in our everyday lives. So I think when we have some free time, where we want to recharge. We want to learn to take breaks and be proud of ourselves, that we are listening to ourselves and that we are taking such great care of ourselves. I think when we go to a workout, a fitness class of whatever kind, we need to practice stuff that we don't do during the day. And that's how we can dissolve all the stress and the pressure from everyday life. So that's why I guide through every movement and every technique with enthusiasm. And I'm, I'm pointing out all the benefits and I'm drawing everyone's attention to what feels great at the moment. And I share how we can face a challenge in a positive and constructive way. And that makes a huge difference. Because when everybody is sweating and is being challenged and your trainer or your teacher says something like, Oh, I know it's hard. Oh, I'm tired too. I know the muscles hurt, but... No pain, no gain, right? <laughs> well, that really doesn't give you a burst of energy, does it? <laughs> Words have direct impact on our bodies. I've talked about this before, how words shape our reality and our attitude. So words have the power to either raise our energy or drain our energy. And what I've just mentioned 
before when the train trainer says, oh, I know it's hard. Oh, I'm tired too. This drains our energy. And there are fascinating studies about how words impact us physically, immediately. Um, there were studies about where people heard certain words that triggered their body to move slower and with less energy. Just words. Words have a direct effect on our body. So that's why everyone who is working with groups in a, some sort of fitness setting, or maybe even not, <laughs> it could be anything. Whenever you work with humans, we need to be aware that our choice of words has a profound effect on the energy level of our group, on the body, on their reality, on their attitude, on everything. And it's magical when my groups are tired and, you know, even I myself am tired on some days. I'm sure you all know the feeling. Um, there are days when we're just like, oh, I would love to just stay in bed. <laughs> but then I activate all my enthusiasm. Whatever I can activate on that specific day is always fine. <laughs> And by doing so, we all get a burst of energy. Enthusiasm raises the energy level of all of us, including ourselves, and just brings joy and allows us to go beyond the limits in our heads. And enthusiasm helps us to attract new clients and inspire work relations that last over decades. So whatever you do with enthusiasm, you will always stick out from the crowd. And you and your success will be independent from what is currently trendy because you will never have competitors. Your work can't compare to, to others to anything that somebody else does because you invest all your energy and your heart and you give 100% all the time. And what's more, you keep up your own motivation and you yourself are energized too and you feel fulfilled by what you do. So I hope I could show you this amazing package called enthusiasm and its immense and magical and fantastic power. And to finish, I would like to share some quotes from very successful humans who all know about the power and enth of enthusiasm and they all know how strongly it contributed to their personal success. And let me First quote, Bear Grylls, who once wrote on Twitter, Enthusiasm spells the difference between mediocrity and accomplishment. Like I said, you always stand out. Or Henry Ford said, Enthusiasm is the sparkle in your eyes the swing in your gait, the irresistible surge of will and energy to execute your ideas. You can do anything if you have enthusiasm. Wow, that's very powerful, isn't it? You can do anything if you have enthusiasm. I agree 100%. You can do anything if you have enthusiasm. And another quote, um, a very short and very on point quote by Bill Gates is, what I do best is share my enthusiasm. So it's not about what product or what service you offer. It's about the attitude behind it. 
And I have one more from a brilliant writer and I'd like to finish with this one because it's both powerful and beautiful. And um, Ralph Waldo Emerson describes enthusiasm like this. Enthusiasm is one of the most powerful engines of success. When you do a thing, do it with all your might. Be active, be energetic, be enthusiastic and faithful. And you will accomplish your object. Nothing great was ever achieved without enthusiasm. That's another brilliant sentence to remember. Nothing great was ever achieved without enthusiasm. Wow, right? So everyone, dears, tap into your enthusiasm, light this fire and bring all of these amazing qualities Excitement, inspiration, motivation, creativity, joy, persistence into your life and let them open the doors to success. Believe in yourself, believe in your ideas and stay enthusiastic about creating the life that excites you. If you're interested in how I bring enthusiasm to my projects in online classes and courses, please find inspiration and information on my website. It's yuna.com, Y-U-N-A.com. The link is in the show notes. And you can experience a class with me if you like in the comfort of your own home. And just feel yourself what a difference it makes to be guided through challenges with enthusiasm and positive motivation. It's all about the words we choose, right? And also, please, please make sure to connect with me on Instagram. It's my name, at Suzanne Freihertz. My account is full of positivity. I'm always enthusiastic about sharing how I live what I share here on this show. And I, I always only show uh, share what I do myself. So I'd be happy to connect on Instagram. And also please make sure to never miss a thing. Please subscribe to my show and to my newsletter. And it would be my honor to keep you motivated and to give you ideas and techniques how you can activate and hold on to positivity in your life. Everyone, I'm so grateful that you are here, that I am allowed to be a part of your life. This is very, very special. Thank you so much. Wherever you are and whatever you do, let enthusiasm give you wings to fly. And let positivity pervade your whole amazing, unique life. And remember, create joy and bliss. Shed the negative. The new normal is insanely positive.